In today's video, I want to show you my entire work process when I color grade videos. We're going to work with a similar scene to what you're seeing here, and I'll walk you through everything from, from you know the different scopes to all my different tips and tricks the difference of color like correction and color grading how i use the curves and just you know just everything i'm spilling all the beans my friend so without further ado you know strap on your I, I, nobody is watching this some of you might be watching in the car if you are strap on your seatbelt and let's do this Welcome to Premiere Pro. So first thing first, navigate to this color tab and then you are in the, you know, color grading section within uh, Premiere Pro. Now I like to have these three scopes up here. Um, if you don't see them for any reason, you can right click. So make sure to click uh, Luma, sco Lumetri scopes to see them. This helps me a lot and will help you too <laughs> within when you're color grading your videos. And if you right click, you can have the scopes. I like to have the waveform Luma, that's this one here the Parade RGB, that's this one here, and then the uh, YUV. So basically, that's this one. So basically what this tells me, this tells me if I'm clipping the color, so if it's too saturated, if you, for instance, you can see if I move the color here, too much orange, it goes above, like uh, goes above these lines here and tells me you're, you're way too orange, you're clipping your colors there. And you can also see if we drag out the saturation, it, it will, if I just bump it up, you can see how this grows, okay? Now let's erase that. This scope here just tells me where I sit in the white balance, like how much you can see if I go too much in the blue, the blue comes way too more dominant, okay? So it's nice to have there. And then this tells me the uh, Luma. So down here you have the black, and here up here you have the whites. And this is a perfect representative of this image. You can see I sit here in the middle, so this here is me, I'm here, and then this space here is this space here. And you can see if we go way too dark as, and I go below here, I'm clipping, there's no, the, like the dark is too dark and there's no information left. So I keep this in mind. And the same on the top side, if we blow out the everything, you can see that now it moves up all things here. We go up in the exposure and now like, this image is obviously too overexposed. So it's just telling me how I'm exposed, okay? Now, what uh, I think is good to understand if you're totally new to when it comes to color grading is that you have color correction and then you have color grading. We're going to do both here. So the difference is basically that color correction, then you're just correcting the uh, footage, you're making the white balance right and you're getting contrast back to the image and just making it look, you know, getting a rec. 709 look, a natural look to your image. And then once you have made the color correction and you made the image look like uh, natural and good, then you can add color grading. And color grading is just, a, then you're making a style within the colors. You can change the hue however you like and, and put your own style to it, you understand? It's basically, that. that's basically <laughs> how it is. And l I, I, let's start here with the uh, color grading. So when you're on in uh, Lumetric Color, um, you can do it here. Yeah, one more thing. I often like to do the color grading on an adjustment layer. So if you click down here, you can click adjustment layer and then okay. And then you have an adjustment layer and I drag it on top. That way I just, you know, I'm not uh, changing the original file and I can put the adjustments here. So click the adjustment layer and then we can start in the basic correction. So here we have the basic correction, main lumetric color, basic correction. And here I usually start and I take a look at the white balance. The white balance thing looks pretty good. I'm going to do some changes uh, further down in the color wheels and match to push some blues in, but that's a little bit later. You can usually, like, usually I just do everything here. You can like add contrast and, and, and for this scene, I'll probably add um, some whites to make it a little bit, uh, you know, brighter. Might add a little bit of uh, highlights too. Instead of messing with the exposure up and down, that, that I sometimes, sometimes do, I rather uh, like use these here, the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, um, basically because then I have more control. It's the end of the exposure, just dialing everything up and down. Here I can choose if I want the whites to go up or the, the highlights or, or shadows or blacks. You understand me? However, for this specific scene, I would like to start in the curve. And yeah, I think it's good to also that you know that this specific shot is shot in, so if we take this out off like this, this is a Cine 4. So this is not S-Log. If this was an S-Log footage, you, you've probably seen those footage. They're extremely gray and it would probably look something more like this, much less contrasty and less less color, something like this. And what to do then is um, you just have to add more contrast <laughs> and, and color grade a little bit more. Now, why I don't I shoot in S-Log here? 
simply because I'm shooting on a Sony a6400 and I've never liked the S-Lock on the Sony a6400. But I think the Cine, Cine 4 especially, I like that color profile a whole lot. So uh, that's my native color profile. I've been like that for the last years. Now, as you can see, you can add the contrast there, but I like to go down the curves and um, build a little curve first. Usually what you do, I might add an S-curve. So basically that looks like this and you do an S-curve just like so. And, and and so if you don't know what an S-curve is, or <laughs> sorry, if you don't know what the tone curve is, I have a whole video on it, I'll link it up here, and then you can, you know, take a look at it. And while you are at it, smack that like button for me on this video and the other video as well. And all my videos, you know, go through them all. I think there's almost 300 videos, so smack the like button, you know? <laughs> Anyways, um, for this specific video, I would like to do a little bit of a different curve. So what I do then, I would like to get the blacks to be a little bit more black. So if you, if I, click here in the bottom and I drag it like this, you can see that I'm making the black come much black darker, you understand? So like too much and then like obviously you can't do anything with this, I mean let's not be silly here, but like just a little bit like this and I think it's going to look pretty damn sick. And up here we do the same and I'm going to get the whites to be a little bit whiter. So something along here. Now you might see that I'm clipping a little bit here, I think it's okay, this is a super dark area and this here, these are the lights here that we see here. And I think that's okay that that is a little bit blown out for this specific scene. Now what I might do then is I like to add a few different um, nodes like this and I actually like to add them then in between these three there. So we have then the shadow areas and then I just like to massage the curve a tiny bit like this. Just a tiny bit, see what it does. You can see here we go way too much but if we go just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit and then a tiny bit up here and then I might do it like um, might uh, do it throughout the entire curve, but for the sake of the tutorial, so this isn't like uh, takes <laughs> endless amount of time, then let's just have it something like this. And you can already see that I think the contrast is beautiful and it looks, I, I mean, it looks good. I think it's very even and nice and I like it a whole lot. Might even do up, might do it like this and actually take down the blacks just a little bit like so. So we get a little bit of information down here, right? And I think, yeah, looks uh, good to my eyes. Then we, like, I'm gonna go down on, on all these, but in a second. First, I wanna, like, finish the basic correction. We might add a tiny bit of contrast here, just to make a little bit pop. Let me see. And I think we don't need to add the whites now. I think this, I think this looks, this looks, I think this looks pretty good as it is. I'll show you a little trick later to make myself uh, pop out of the uh, image. But I think for, for this, I think this is good. Now for the white balance, I th I, as I said, I think the white balance just looks pretty good here. I don't have to do, I, I like it how it is. A little trick that you can use is that you, if you take this pen tool, now you can click here wherever you want, and wherever you click, Premiere assumes that this is the white point. So you're put, making the white point and you can like make a, you can do the, white balance correction very quickly. However, we don't really have any nice white point here, so sometimes when I film, I might lift the paper beforehand and then I click that or whatever. But let's for instance say that this frame should be white and now Premiere makes that frame uh, white. You understand? You can see that maybe maybe even it is a little bit, uh, it is a little bit orangey, but I'm gonna fix that in the uh, color wheels in a second. So let's just reset this. Um, but let's, you know, I think it might get be a little bit more magenta. Just like so, I think this is nice. And from the start to finish, uh, we've already to made the photo like this uh, to this photo, the uh, footage, the video footage, I mean. So, okay, now I will do the creative. The creative part, this is where you you um, you do the color grading. So maybe I should have told you all, we have the basic correction, creative tab, curves, color wheels, HSL, secondary, and vignette. And uh, we, this is where I, I work a lot. Now, I like to work a lot in the curves. So if you go down here and use this curve, this curve I like a whole lot. So basically here you have hue versus sat. So you can take any hue that you want and make that more saturated. I want my jacket to pop a little bit more. So you can either click here and, and then just click and it's gonna find the blue tones or you can simply just click the blue tones are here to here. And then you can now, you see how my jacket becomes much more if I drag it up, it becomes super saturated. And here we take that off the saturation. I like to keep have the up the saturation just a little, little bit. And then I also like my skin tone, uh, my skin tone here to, you can see here, I can make myself a little bit more 
a little bit more come to life, just like so. Now, hue versus hue. Here you can change the hue of any color. I want my jacket to be a little bit more turquoise, so we do it like this again, and then one in the middle, and now you can see I can change the color of my jacket. Depending on how good uh, camera you have, you can do it more or less uh, just before you break the footage. I think on the A6400, I cannot go too heavy or you start to break the footage, but somewhere like this, I think it's okay. And then the Hue versus Luma, I don't really touch, but then you basically can, you know, uh, make the whatever hue that you want uh, increase or decrease the luma luma luminosity do you say that <laughs> the luma the brightness of it and luma versus sat here i like to make one of these and and one of these so basically what i'm doing this is the brightest part and this is the darkest part of the um of the uh, footage and i'm taking away the color on the darkest part and the brightest part making them true blacks and true true darks and i think this is very subtle you don't really notice it but it makes sure that you don't like the the uh, the blacks are don't have like the total blacks aren't a little bit bluish or something like that they are true blacks and true whites and i think this is um this is really a little uh, little uh, tip that uh, enhances like this subtlety makes it a big difference okay now we are i think we i like this so far i might go back like as with everything i go back and forth back and forth but i think for now this is something to look pretty good i would like to go down to the color wheels and here you so what these are basically they might look a little bit uh, intimidating in the beginning they're not they're very simple to use and extremely fun very fun tools so basically here you can take the shadows and you can push whatever color that you want within the shadows by basically you know clicking on it like this and then dragging the further you drag down the like more shadows you have shadows the more color you're pushing in the shadows and then the more colors like you you understand what i'm saying double click and you reset and on the, here you can also mess with the the you know the brightness of the shadows so if you drag this up you can increase the brightness of the shadows or if you drag it down you're making them darker okay so here i sometimes like to even just drag down the shadows just a tiny tiny bit to get them uh, just to make myself and just increase the contrast a little bit however you don't have to like increase the contrast wherever you are you don't have to increase it in the curves and in the basic correction and here but what do whatever you feel like but i like to do something drag it just a tiny bit just so some something 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 there okay for this specific scene i would like to make like i would like to introduce some blues <laughs> Did that rhyme? I would like to introduce some blues. I'm not talking about the music. I'm talking about the color blues. Blues. The color blue within here. So somewhere I think this is this is pretty nice. And the mid-tones, that's where usually where the skin, or that is not usually, that's where the skin tones sit. So here I would like to add in some oranges or like whatever skin tone that you want. If you want me to be blue, then we can do it like that. But I think this will look pretty good. And this like where I go here just depends on like how I want like the whites to be within the, the footage and look at this I think we can do something something here okay like this and now we can even increase the blues in the shadows here you can actually add up the the mid-tones just a tiny bit if you want if you want like the skins of the skin the skin tones of the like footage you have to pop a little bit and the highlights is the same so you're adding to the highlights and i like them to be introduce a little bit of blue there too you can see i've already made the footage much colder um, and just introduced a little color palette in the the um like I've introduced a little blue here and then I'm a little bit orange and and I think that looks I'm I'm I like this look a whole lot. However, this is a little bit too we're too heavy on the the blue at the moment. I'm I'm becoming too blue, so let's just add up the color on me like so. Isn't this Yeah, you can if you, if you look at the background here, you can see how the background is here a little bit reddish and oranges orangey and here I'm I'm making it a little bit bluer, and then I'm able to separate myself a little bit from the from the uh, the background. Now, when I usually work on this, this is a bit, a bit tedious. I, I make a tiny adjustment and a look, and a tiny adjustment and a look, and until it's perfect. For the sake of the tutorial, let's make sure that like the, for the sake of the tutorial, let's make sure let's just have it keep it like this, okay? But this is usually how how I how I work. Now, 
let's go then to the creative part. This is, so I would say, like, honestly, I would say that we've, we've, we've uh, so far, we've done a little bit of basic correction. We did most of the, the, the um, contrast within the curves here. Uh, like, we can do it a little, maybe a little bit, you know, like so. And, and at so far, I think it looks pretty good. It could be that I feel that this footage is a little bit too blue, then I can always come back here and, and uh, you know, do a little bit of temperature adjustment again later. What was I trying to say? We little recap. We done it basic uh, in a correction. We we color corrected the footage. We we've uh, been in the curves. We've done some little bit of color grading within the curves, and then we went down to the color wheels to add some uh, colors within the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And this I think will make a huge difference. You can just see like it. I like this is subtle. You, of course, you can go more heavy if you wanna like introduce some sort of look on it. But this I like a lot. Now. In creative, this is where you can start to add your LUTs uh, if you want. So let's again have the, the uh, forget that I have the Lumetriscope here. So in the LUTs, you can add whatever look that you want. I have some LUTs. I'm not trying to sell you some LUTs. There are a bunch of free LUTs out uh, like within built in the the um, the Premier the Premier program. And um, let's just look at the free LUTs because they are also very cool and I like them a lot. So then you can click here. And I like this one, the Kodak 5205 Fuji, and I think it looks, I think it looks a whole, I, I like this look. I, already it looks pretty cool, good. I, I, let's, I agree with you that this is way too much, so you can always dial it down like this. You see the intensity here, you can like it increase or decrease the intensity a whole lot. So let's just keep it down to like, like 30 or 40, and you can see the difference here. You change the look a whole lot, and I think I like this look a lot. Then I would also like say that I think this uh, footage is a little bit, we, we lack a little bit of color, so let's add a little bit of saturation and and um, and uh, yeah, add a little bit of color within the saturation, a little bit of white branch. If you want, you can drag the fade film up, so here you're fading, um, you're basically making the blacks not blacks, so you're introducing a little bit of fade, making a little bit of film look. This used to be ex this look here used to be extremely popular when I started on YouTube 2016. Uh, not so much, but I like I often like to have a little bit of sorry uh, to put down there. I often like to have a little bit of fade. I think that looks good. Maybe around you know five-ish or something like that. Uh, just a little little fade. I think that looks uh, very 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 nice. Now, let's see how far we come now, but just adding a little bit of saturation, a little bit of vibrance, and adding this little, tiny lot here, you can see that before and after, I mean, it's huge. I mean, you can say that this is finished now. If you want, you can do some final adjustments. Maybe you want to have a little bit more contrast here and there. I would probably, because the scene is a little bit blue, I would probably go down in the curves, and I would actually, like my beard and everything here, like just the entire orange spectrum. <laughs> I'm a very orange looking guy, you know, that's just my color palette. I would actually want to like increase the con and, uh, saturation a little bit in the uh, on myself. So I'm popping a little bit out. And all in all, I think this starts to look, I think this starts to look pretty nice. Now, here's a little trick for you that I want to show you too. So when you're working with a face of a person, how 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 bright should you have it? There is this um, I, I I can't remember remember the name of it, but there is this uh, uh, template that you can use to show you how bright uh, where the brightness you know should sit depending on the skin tones. And I often use this. Now what you can do to to isolate the skin and just see where you sit and where you are, you can go down if you click the footage down here and then effects control and then. Uh, so put this here, effects, control, and then opacity, and you make a circle, and you make a little circle around just the your skin, okay? Like so. So you, I hope you are, <laughs> I really hope that this makes sense that of what I'm trying to teach here. But if you go to Lumetri now, you can see that we've isolated just the part of the skin. And you can see that for my, my skin, if we if you compare it to the color of the template, I think it should sit around 60 or 80. So I could make it a little bit brighter. And this is very nice to just see, like, let's say that it was like this like the footage you came out it, it looked like this it was pretty dark then you can see okay i can easily like brighten up my skin to skin and it would look uh, nice so we can have it you know touch somewhere here and and also for the colors can i have my skin tone um, like more colorful before i start to you know 
uh, blast the uh, like clip the, with the colors. You can see I can easily go like a lot more. I can have I can introduce more colors to this scene, and 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 so I think this is a nice little trick. However, what I would like to do so if we go down here and, and delete this mask, then you can just delete it. What you can do is is to to make myself pop a little bit more from the photo. Is is the photo the footage again? Is this here? So. I am going to go to effects control and lumetri, lumetri color and add a new lumetri color to the footage, to the footage here. So now you can see we have this, the old one that we've been working on and now we added a new one, okay? What I do with the new one, I make a circle like this and I make it around me. So I am the subject and I want to brighten up myself, a little bit like you're working with, you know, uh, layers in Photoshop or, or Lightroom. We're doing the same here. And then in the feather, we can feather it out just like so. Okay? So you can see here that we have it something like this and this and this. And what we can do now is while this is highlighted, we can actually, we can have this so we can just see. I want to brighten up me a little bit more. So there's a tiny, tiny bit. You can see here if we go too much. Just a tiny bit, uh, like so. We can add the highlights just a little bit, little bit like this, and contrast is a tiny bit, like so. And I th like this a whole lot. Um, let me just do it like this so we can see where we're doing, like so. I think is I think this is pretty safe. So let me let's just take a look at this. So what this does. You can see how this just brightens up me just a tiny bit. Now this might have been a little bit too much, then it's just easy to to take down it a little bit. And you understand you understand what I'm trying to do here, right? I like this a lot, and I think this is a little little subtle thing you can do to make the you know, subject just a little pop a little bit away from the from the uh, rest of the the footage. So this is basically a very simple way. You, I'm not even jumping down in the HSL secondary. I'm not making this any more complicated than I have to. This is like very simple way for me to color grade. I hope I was able to deliver the knowledge and communicate this in a way that you understood. This is a little bit raw. I like these type of tutorials where I just put on the camera and I talk to you. I think it makes it very organic. Anyways, if you could smack that like button for me, it really helps me out. Consider subscribing because you know, create a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of videos and I catch you guys in the next video mode. Peace.